Hello, this is Mrs. Sargent, and this is lesson 5.6, Percent Composition. So first, let's just talk a little bit about how we find percentages of a group. We have a group of animals here. We have dogs, cats, birds, and butterflies. And we want to find the percentage of each of the animals. So in order to find the percentage, you need to find the number of the individual and divide it by the total number of the group. So part divided by the whole. So we have four, five, six, seven dogs. We have two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cats, six birds, and four butterflies. We have a total of 25 animals. So we're going to divide each of these by 25. And then to get that percentage, to get it out of the decimal form, we need to multiply it by 100. So, 7 divided by 25 times 100 should give us 28%. Uh, 8 divided by 28, or 25, sorry should give us 32%. 6 divided by 25 should give us 24%. And then 4 divided by 25 gives us 16%. And when we add all of these together, we should get 100%, and that will tell us that we did our math correctly. And check it, we do get 100%, so we don't have any calculation errors, and we're good. We're going to use the same method in order to determine the percent composition of specific compounds. So the steps in finding percent composition is the first thing we have to do is we find, have to find the total molar mass. Then we need to divide the individual masses by the total molar mass and multiply by 100 to get percentages. Check, it should equal 100%. The acceptable range that um, we are going to deal with in this class is 99.99 to 100.01 percent okay so um, always round your uh, percentages to two decimal places and as long as all of them added together falls between 99.99 and 100.01 then that shall tells you that you've done your math Correctly. I will be checking for this step on your quizzes, um, so make sure that you do that step as well. So to determine the percent composition of water, water's formula is H2O. So we first need to find the total molar mass. So to find molar mass, you take the average atomic mass times the number of elements to get the individual masses of each element. So this should be 2.02 .02 and 16. Add them together to get our total molar mass. So 18.02 grams per mole is our total molar mass. 
So now we're going to divide the individual masses of each element by the total molar mass. So 18.02. And then we multiply by 100 to get a percentage. I kind of do this all as one step just to save some room and calculations. So this for hydrogen, it's 11.21%. Percent and for oxygen, it's going to be 88.79 percent. When we add these together, we get 100.00 percent. So we're good. Our next example we want to determine the percent composition of magnesium phosphate. So we have magnesium, we have phosphorus, and we have oxygen. So magnesium's average atomic mass is 24.31, phosphorus is 30.97, and then oxygen is 16. I have three magnesium, and remember this two gets distributed to everything inside the parentheses. So I have two phosphorus and then two times four, I have eight oxygen. So 24.31 times three gives us 72.93, 30.97 gives us 61. 16 times 8 gives us 128. We're going to add all of these together to get our total molar mass, which is 262.87 grams per mole. Make sure you're labeling your molar mass with grams per mole. We're going to divide the individual masses by 262.87. Then we're going to multiply each of them times 100. So the percent of magnesium is going to be 27.74%. The percent of phosphorus is going to be 23.56%. And oxygen is going to be 48.69%. Add these together to check to see if it's in our acceptable range. So we're going to take 27.74 plus 23.56 plus 48. 0.69, and that gives us 99.99%, which is within our acceptable range, and so we're done with this problem. Our next example says, which has a larger percent by mass of oxygen? So we have P5O8 and we have NO2, so we have phosphorus and oxygen here. Take our average atomic masses for each of them, then multiply by the number of atoms. Thirty point nine seven times five is going to give us one fifty four point eight five. Sixteen times eight is going to give us one twenty eight. Add those together, and we get two eighty two point eight five grams per mole. Divide each of these by two eighty two point eight five. Actually, um, you can just 
uh, divide your oxygen by the total molar mass. If you're comfortable with finding percent composition, I'm fine with you just doing the oxygen. Um, but if you want to check to make sure that you are on track and it adds up to 100, um, you can do each of them. So 54.75 percent and then 45.25 percent when we add these together we do get 100 percent for NO2 we have nitrogen and we have oxygen nitrogen's average atomic mass is 14.01 oxygen is 16 times by 1 times by 2 this gives us 14 and then 32 which should give us a total molar mass of 46.01 grams per mole divide each of these by the total molar mass Um, so this one is going to be 30.45% and oxygen is going to be 69.55%. Add them together and we should get 100%. Okay. So NO2 has a larger percent of oxygen than uh, P508. So NO2 has the larger percent by mass of oxygen. One last example here. Um, this one says what is the percent of com composition of a substance that contains 18.02 grams of carbon, 3.02 grams of hydrogen, and 24 grams of oxygen. So instead of given being given um, a formula and you have to calculate the individual masses, we're just starting with our individual masses. So 18.02 grams of carbon, 3.02 grams of hydrogen and 24 grams of oxygen. We're going to add all of these together to get our total mass which is 45.04 grams per mole. Divide this by the total mass. Okay, so our percentage of carbon is going to be 40.01 percent. Percent of hydrogen is 6.71 percent. And oxygen is going to be 53.29 percent. Add those together, and I got 100.01 percent, which still falls within our acceptable range. And so we're done. You have practice um, that follows this lesson. Uh, you will have a homework quiz over percent composition next time in class. 
Um, so make sure you work through these uh, problems and come in and see me if you have any questions. Thanks. Have a great day.